Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And this is the book I will continue share I'll be continue I will continue to share from Snakes, Roosters and Pigs. This is by my guru, His Eminence, the 25th, Sam Toko Rinpoche. I'll be reading from page 50, The Kingdom of Shambhala. And before that, let me go to a picture to share with you. This is a picture which I felt may depict a little of what Shambhala is. Okay, page 50. One, the Kingdom of Shambhala. One of the key lessons we learned from John Riley Perk's book is perseverance. That is very basic Dharma. Perseverance is not to give up, and this is the key. Yes, it's not going to be easy. And why is that? Why is it that we have challenges? Why is it so difficult? Because we have a lot of negative karma to purify. This is why lamas like Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche use different methods on different people. John Riley Perk's example shows us perseverance, not giving up, and not having preconceptions that something should be this way or that way. He shows us what it means to just go into something and just do it. John Riley Perks didn't give up. In the book, there is a superb, superb account of John's journey with Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche, who inflicted extensive and crazy demands on him. And yet, John, as the attendant, never lost heart. He showed complete the devotion and surrendered fully to his guru. We must realize the point that, to become enlightened, there is no other way but to give up the self, to realize emptiness and no self. The reality of enlightenment is beyond ordinary description. The reality of ordinary self is beyond description. There are no words on our level that can describe something that we have not experienced. When someone is talking from a level that we have not experienced, then it will seem like that person is crazy. When a person acts out of, experience, of an experience that you have not experienced, when a person acts out of a reality or an absolute type of reality that you have not even tasted or glimpsed, the way they act will seem to be crazy to you. Their actions will seem crazy because they will be acting beyond your projections, your box, and what you think is right or wrong. Within the Tibetan system, we call this crazy wisdom. It may seem crazy to you, but it is actually wisdom. This is because although the actions may look crazy in the beginning, they end up bringing total benefit eventually. What touched me the most was in the afterword of the book, in an excerpt from uh, sorry, when John Riley asked his lama, Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche, are these awards and appointments fact or fiction? And Rinpoche answered both. I was so moved. On a tantric level, Chogyam Trumpa is recognized as one of the great reincarnations of the Rigdens of Shambhala, a spiritual kingdom that is within our minds. A Rigdon or a Sakyong is a being from this kingdom who is a holder of the inner wealth of enlightenment. This is a kingdom where you operate from enlightenment. Or, oh sorry, on an inner level, this represents emptiness. On a superficial level, Shambhala is regarded as a mystical area in the Himalayan region where the main practice is that of the Tantric deity Kala Chakra. Within this kingdom, all the Sakyons and great generals there have a sacred job. In the future, around the time of the 25th century, the Kulika king of Shambhala, 
who is an emanation of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, will manifest into the world to create one last renaissance of Buddha Shakyamuni's teachings before they completely disintegrate. At that time, His Holiness will manifest as a king of Shambhala, who, with his warriors, generals, and many Sakyongs, will go out into the world to teach Dharma in a powerful way and to transform people's mind one last time before the golden teachings of the Buddha disappear. These beings are preparing the world for Shambhala to bring about one more spiritual renaissance. These Sakyongs, therefore, are generals and great masters, and they have kalapas, or great ladrangs and houses in this mystical kingdom where they emanate from. When the Sakyongs give you titles such as the Kusung, Dapong, the Minister of Food, the Minister of Clothes, the caretaker of the house, they actually help you to plant seeds in your mind for you to assume these positions in the future in a divine paradise. When Chogyam Trumpa gave out these titles and awards, they look like jokes and fun, but they were planting seeds for John Perks or Major John or Warrior John and his students to reincarnate in Shambhala to become the main assistant of Sakyong Chogyam Trumpa. Given, giving out these awards was something very significant. This is why when John asked whether these titles and awards were real or imaginary, Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche answered both. On this earth, they are imaginary, but on an absolute level, they are real. I believe John Perks will reincarnate in Shambhala. When many high Tibetan lamas give you letters in, on their stationery or sign and sign the letters, they actually bless the letters and do pujas or prayers before giving them to you. When you treat the letter and whatever it is on that letter with respect, it is very significant for your next rebirth. When you carelessly throw the letter away, you don't care or you think that it's just a letter, you throw your next life away. The Lama is preparing you for something great. So when you respond to whatever is in the letter by saying you can't do it, that would mean that you think your Lama is wrong. If that is the case, then, then don't receive teachings from him anymore. How can the Lama be right for some things and wrong with others? When the Lama gives you a letter and appoints you for something, it is real. On the other hand, it is also not real. What is not real? Your inability not to do it. Your imagination that tricks you into thinking that you cannot do it. Because the Lama sees something much further, much farther within you and knows that you can accomplish it if you persevere. If you continuously fail the Lama, how does the Lama help you? How does the Lama bring you to the next step? It becomes very difficult. Chogyam Trumpa also had a wonderful way of giving different names to people. He was skilled at giving names that stuck. Can you imagine? He gave John the name Bonnie Johnny Forever. I don't know what it means, but the names must have had some meaning to them. Lamas will give you all kinds of names to break your concept of who you are, where you think I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. Some people fight, some people go along with it. Sometimes the names have meaning. If you read the book, look at it, look at all the salutations and names Chogyam Trumpa bestowed on John Perks in his letters. In the name of the profound, brilliant, just powerful, all victorious Rigdon, his glorious Sakyon on earth. Remember that there was just the two of them in the room and Chogyam Trumpa was writing all this out about himself. I thought this was a beautiful way to end the book because it summed up 
the whole life of a Mahasiddha. He exists and he is there, but not all the sorry, but not at all in the way that we expect or perceive him to be. And that is the end of this book, as Rinpoche said. And as you can see, how skillfully uh, Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche was preparing John Riley Perks in his for his spiritual path, and he has implanted a lot of um, things for the future for his future lives. And as Rinpoche has mentioned, that um, he is quite sure that John Riley Perks will be reborn in, will reincarnate into Shambhala. And that is such greatness in that. And well, thank you for sharing your time with me. And I do hope that you would um, think about what Rinpoche has shared, has taught, you know, in this book, and how we habituate our minds, and how the lamas are so compassionate and kind to actually you know, come into our world to bring themselves down into our levels to teach us and guide us to overcome our habituation and, you know, that he, their concern um, for us to progress in our spiritual path and which, you know, basically to end our time in samsara which is basically sufferings and please do get this book to read snakes roosters and pigs it is actually a very short book a very um, it's quite thin look at that and but the thing is the content is very very applicable to us and if we were to contemplate on what Rinpoche thought you know we'll realize how our monkey minds have been playing, playing tricks on us and keeping us in samsara thank you and I'll end this with a completion dedication in English may the precious body mind where it is not born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. May the precious emptiness, where it is not born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. May this merit accumulated by myself and others beneficially serve all sentient beings and the Buddha Dharma, and especially may the essential teachings of the unerring Master Tsongkhapa become clear and enduring. In all my rebirths, may I not be parted from perfect gurus. Let me enjoy the abundance of the Dharma, perfecting the quality stages and paths. May I quickly attain the rank of Rajadhara Buddha. By the virtue, may I quickly realize Guru Buddhahood and transfer each sentient being into the enlightened state. May all condu conducive conditions arise and all obstacles be pacified in order to increase infinitely the doctrine of the spiritual king Tsongkhapa. By the merits of the three times of myself and others, may the doctrine of Lama Tsongkhapa blaze forever. At dawn or dusk, at night or midday, may the three jewels grant us their blessing. May they help us to achieve all realizations 
and sprinkle the paths of our lives with fair signs of auspiciousness. May the holy teachers have long lives. May the enlightened activities be fully displayed in the ten directions. And may the brightness of the teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa continuously dissipate the veil of darkness covering the beings of the three realms. In this holy land surrounded by snow mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. May your lotus feet, O powerful Cherenzik Tenzin Gyatso, remain in this world until the end of existence. A very beautiful, powerful prayer. And thank you again for sharing your time with me. I'll be starting on a new book in my next sharing.